Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iPadOS 17 is out for the public. This update brings a bunch of new features and changes and so we'll go over what's new, but first let's talk about supported devices. Now iPadOS 17 supports iPad Pro 2nd generation and later, iPad Air 3rd generation and later, iPad 6th generation and later, and iPad Mini 5th generation and later. Any other iPads are no longer supported. Now this update will vary in size depending on the device and the OS you're upgrading from, but it can be anywhere from about one to six gigabytes in size overall. Now, like I said, there's quite a few new features, but we're only going to cover the new features that are specific to iPad. I covered a ton of different features, over 200 features with iOS 17, so we won't cover those that are redundant. At least for the most part, we'll cover the new features specific to iPad. If you haven't seen the other video, be sure to check it out as there's over 210 new features there. Now, the first thing Apple has updated is the lock screen. They've actually brought customizable lock screens to the iPad like we had last year with iOS 16. Now we have it with iPad OS 17. So you may notice already I have my wallpaper and a few different widgets here. If I press and hold, I can customize this just like you would expect. And if I go to customize, of course I can just tap and customize. Then I can tap on maybe the time here and adjust the overall font, adjust the color, customize it however I'd like. So this is something, again, we can do on iOS, but they finally brought to iPad OS. Additionally, of course, we can add widgets here. So if we want to add widgets on the left, we can do that. Maybe add the weather here, then maybe add a couple different things. Maybe your calendar events, whatever you want here, you can add with widgets throughout the OS, just like you can again on iOS. If you want to add filters, you can do that to the current wallpaper and adjust it as you see fit. Also, if we tap on done, you'll see that I have a couple others here. If I lock the display, turn it back on, it's animated just from a live photo I took. I took another one in nature here, and this shows you what it looks like. So really nice, you can use any of your live photos to animate like that, and just use them as your wallpaper or whatever you'd like. Additionally, we have some new wallpapers here as well that are animated. They're sort of live wallpapers like we've had before. If I press the plus button to add a wallpaper, and if I scroll down in my wallpaper, you'll see we have weather and astronomy. They've now added the planets, each planet that we have, as well as kaleidoscope, emoji, unity, pride, collections, and colors. So if you want to use the stock iOS 17 wallpaper, you can do that. Or if you prefer to use something else, like one of these kaleidoscope wallpapers, these are actually animated. So we'll go ahead and hit add. I'll show you this quickly. We'll add this. We'll hit done. There we go, we're into the wallpaper. If I rotate the display, it actually rotates like a kaleidoscope. The same is true if I lock the display and open it back up, it just animates as I bring in maybe the notification center or go back. So a really nice live wallpaper. I would love to see more and more of this throughout the OS. Let's go ahead and change it back here. So again, you can change it to whatever you'd like, fully customize it. And of course you saw we have widgets here. These widgets are interactive now. So if you want to turn these on and off, you can do that and interact with them or interact with maybe music here that we have. So let me make sure the volumes turned down. We're turned all the way down. Let's go ahead and press play. We press play. It changes the background of the widget. It takes a moment and starts to play the music. You can change through the different widgets. Maybe you want to go to weather. Of course that will open, but if you have other widgets that are interactive, you can use those as well. That was added with iOS 17 as well. So they carry over to iPad OS. Something else Apple has finally added to iPad OS is the health app. We finally have the health app on iPad OS where we have our summary and it's completely designed to be just like we have all the other apps on iPad. We have our menu bar on the left. We can get rid of it, add it back, go through medications, check out heart health and much more. They've also added the new mental well-being section as well. So if you want to measure that, go into mindfulness and things like that, your state of mind, add maybe a state of mind today, you can do that. So these features have finally been added to iPad. We haven't had those on iPad and we finally do. Stage manager gets an update this time around too to make it more useful. You now have more flexibility when moving windows around. So maybe if we go into music, let me go ahead and enable stage manager. Now we're in stage manager. And like I said, it's more customizable. If I want to shrink this window, I can, if I want to bring in maybe this one here with photos, I can do that, resize it. And then maybe I want to bring in this one here. Let me see if we move this over. We again can resize this and they overlay instead of just sort of snapping wherever you don't want them to, they'll overlay one another and you can 
have this however you'd like. If we go back into a main app here, you can do that, go back and they'll switch more quickly between different apps. There's also some quick ways to do this as well. If you have a magic keyboard or third party keyboard, you can quickly switch between these apps and have them snap to what you'd like. And we have fast app pairing with this update. So what that means is you can combine apps for a specific task. Maybe go into Safari, we'll move this over and quickly combine this with health if we want to do that. There's also another way to quickly add apps to your workspace. You can add it to your workspace by holding down shift on a keyboard and an external keyboard while tapping the app maybe down here as well. So we can quickly switch between what we want, get rid of it. And again, if we go back to music, go back to health, they'll switch. But if we hold the shift key, you can bring that in with your other app. So they've added some nice shortcuts to use stage manager if you want to use that. There's also some really nice updates if you're using an external display. So maybe you're using a pro display XDR, or maybe you're using a studio display. You now have the option to use the camera built into that display. So if you want to do that, and you can also use a third party camera attached to it as well. If you want to use that with FaceTime, instead of using the stage manager camera that's built in. So you have that option notes gets an update in iPad OS 17, where you can now edit PDFs directly in notes. There's much better support. And maybe if you want to change something here, just in this example, PDF, you can do that. You also now have the ability to annotate or sketch directly on a PDF. So if you want to do that, maybe circle something you want to change in the future, you can do that. And this has really been updated quite a bit where now you can collaborate on PDFs as well. You can also quickly open these within pages so you can do that. And there's also a really nice feature where if you want to actually use a note and then link it to another note, you can do that. So let's go over to a different note within a note. If we quickly hold shift and then tap two arrows, we can now link it to another note. So maybe we want to link it to that PDF example. We can link this together and have a direct link right back to it. So that's super helpful. If you want to maybe reference something else in the future, we can jump right back to the PDF we were editing before. Freeform also gets an update in iPad OS 17. With markup tools, we get some new tools here down at the bottom. So we have a ruler, we've got our regular pens, but we also have a crayon, we have a highlighter, and we also have a calligraphy pen as well. So some little updates there, basically things we've had with notes for a little while, and it also recognizes shapes now. So maybe if I wanna draw a shape, let's change that here, draw a shape and then hold, it recognizes it just like notes does. So again, a circle, hold, it draws a circle. You can also connect different things together. So that's something I showed in the iOS 17 video, but maybe you want to diagram a little bit better. We want to connect something. We actually have the option to connect objects. You'll see it pops up here and says, let's connect the objects. If you want to connect something, use connectors, drag a connector to create a connection or line. So we can just drag one here, maybe to that shape put another shape, whatever you'd like, you can connect it. You can also now have someone follow you along as you're collaborating. So as you move around the board, they'll be able to see that and follow along that way instead of guessing what you're updating in real time. So it's a pretty simple update, but very helpful if you're using Freeform regularly. And as far as iPad OS goes, that's pretty much it for iPad OS 17. That's different from iOS 17. So lots of little features and changes, but lots of updates that have to do with things with messages, Safari, and more. But again, those also are available on iOS 17. So if you haven't seen those yet, be sure to check out that video. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.